What is up, beautiful people? Corwin L. Gilliams here. I, King Amongst Kings, CLG Speaks. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are just grateful to be alive. Some people didn't wake up this morning. We didn't. That's enough reason for us to find even the smallest opportunity to be grateful. So today, real quick, I just wanted to talk to you about what's been, you know, been in my mind as far as, you know, you know, the world and as far as, you know, me being the self-love promoter and you know, sharing the things, the insights, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding that the Spirit of God has given me to help me, you know, successfully, I believe, to successfully um, sojourn in this life, you know, based on the level I'm at and my desires to grow, right, increase. And so, you, so, you know, one of the things that you have to make a decision about, I think it's the first thing that you need to you know, the first major decision, right, that you need to make when it comes to the plans for your life if you wanted to succeed. Now, you see like how people hire managers and supervisors and people, you know, they put, if you own a business, right, you, you and you're not there to supervise your business 24-7. So you'll hire help, right? You'll hire people that you deem qualified to manage your business in your absence, right? And ultimately, you want someone who, at least for me, you know, I want someone that I'm able to not only trust, but also being able to collaborate with, because I do believe human resources, actual, not, you know, not the actual, uh, you know, principles reco uh, regarding human resources, but the actual human, like literally the human resource, I believe there is things in a human being that cannot be duplicated. And so, for me, at least, you know, the value that I have in, you know, when it comes to people is just priceless, right? I see people as God's creation and, you know, me knowing and, and how I grew up and, and knowing that people was not able to see the wealth that I had in me, you know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't want that to be how I deal with other people who may be insecure about themselves or insecure about certain things about them that in truth, you know, it's actually one of a kind in truth is actually something that yes it probably needs nourishing and cultivating but it doesn't mean that you're in uh, that you're not valuable right it doesn't mean that you're not worthy and so you'll find that so anyway that's just a side note and so yeah if you own a business or some type of establishment where you can't manage it on your own you're going to need some type of assistance aka in this case man a, a, a manager a supervisor somebody whom you've given an established set of uh, authoritative responsibilities that you entrust they will do what is right for your business you'll you'll entrust that they'll make the best decisions not what's best for them but what's best for you and your business right and that's one of the, that's one of the reasons why I believe it's important to have a relationship with people who you are supervising with people who are working for you because again it's more of a collaboration right you want them to kind of get an understanding as to who you are so that, you know, when in your absence, they're thinking, okay, well, what would Corwin do, right? What would Sean do? What would Lisa do, right? But, um, so that's just my, that's just my, that's just my philosophy. Now, with that being said, so I, I gave you that example to, to try to have you correlate that with your personal life, right? We are all managers, leaders, supervisors, however you want to say the, whatever term or label you want to use. At the end of the day, you are responsible for your life, right? And that includes the decisions that you make, right? Which in this case, in this topic has to do with, you know, people who are becoming stumbling blocks, hindrances, um, or just enemies of your destiny, right? There are such things. There are such things. There, and and this, these things come as people, places, and things. Now, unfortunately, what happens is because of, you know, our understanding of relationships and with people, we tend to not think that, you know, the closest people to us can actually be a stumbling block or a hindrance or an enemy, quote unquote, to our destiny. And so you'll find that most times people, you know, they have no problem not dealing with individuals who are not related to them. They have no problem setting guidelines and boundaries when it comes to coworkers and employees and people that they don't know. But when it comes to family members, especially family members that they're close with, they tend to have a hard time setting boundaries and, and, and you know, establishing rules and, and, and regulations when it comes to their happiness, when it comes to their peace, when it comes to who they're trying to become in the world. And you'll find that these individuals that they fail to establish, you know, rules and expectations that, you know, these individuals end up eventually encroaching upon 
not only that person's freedom, but be, you know, be, end up being, again, a slave, uh, an enemy to their destiny, right? Anyone that's preventing you from becoming who you're trying to be in the world, right, is an enemy to your destiny. Anyone who cannot see whatever it is the, as far as God's plans for your life, you know what I'm saying? And in, and in their inability to see it, they want to now become, again, like I said, a hindrance or some type of stumbling block. It's They're an enemy to your destiny. Anybody who does not, cannot respect you for who you are, right? I don't care if you are someone who enjoys being in isolation. I don't care if you're antisocial. I don't care if you're not someone who's friendly. If who you are is conducive to who you want to be in the world as far as being productive, as far as establishing the life that you want, and people cannot respect it, they are enemies of your destiny. You have to understand that God loves you enough, right? He loves you enough to give you the grace and the mercy and all the imperfections that are you, that the world tries to condemn and to make you feel inadequate or inferior, that you do not have to Okay, subscribe to these people's expectations. Like I said, you do not have to subscribe to these people's desires, right? Some people want you to be around them. They want you to socialize with them. They want you to be a part of their clique. They want you to do this. They want you to do that. But the minute that you stand on whatever your convictions are, or just like I said, being you, not everyone is friendly. Not everyone is social. Not everyone needs to have, you know, a group of people around them. Not everyone needs a team to go wherever or to do whatever. Some people are just strong enough See this as a strength. Some people are strong enough to do life alone as much as possible. And whenever and wherever the Spirit of God has created an opportunity or people to come into their lives to help them during that season, they know that that's what God is going to do. And that there is no human being that can make them feel otherwise. You know, some people try to make you feel like, okay, well, the way that you're doing things, it's wrong. The way that you're, you know what I'm saying, the way that you're operating is wrong. But yet still we're in the same place. Yet still we're 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 in the same place. So clearly what you're doing works for you and what I'm doing works for me. And let's see at the end of the day, after the season is over, who moves on, right? And it's kind of like, that's kind of like how you have to have, that's kind of like how your attitude has to be, especially in a world that's quite frankly oppressive in every which way, right? The minute that you begin to think for yourself truthfully, and again, begin to establish rules and regulations and standards for yourself that going back to what I was saying about family and friends, these are the people who tend to have a very difficult time respecting your change. They have a very difficult time, you know what I'm saying, seeing you transform. And they, again, people don't like, some people don't like change. Some people, you know, they like to see you as the way that they've always known you. And the moment you begin to, again, become who God created you to be, become, grow, flourish, uh, um, you know, uh, Increase in in whichever way become cultivated become cultured. I mean, I mean whatever word you want to use the point of the matter is whenever you decide to change change from what you once were change from what people once knew you Most people from my personal experience in fact all people that I've known have not had the love of God in them to allow me to be Right. And eventually, like I said, it was more it was easier snipping off people that you know that I wasn't related to or people who you know what I'm saying? Especially, you know, people who I wasn't related to, people who, you know, that I didn't have a, a necessarily a bond with or spent years with, you know what I'm saying, to cultivate, you know, an emotional connection. However, people like your family, those are the people that you, you know, you don't necessarily choose your blood family, right? They're just there. And so these are the people that, again, we've developed a taught understanding a corrupted, perverted understanding about love, loyalty, and mercy, and we tend to extend ourselves to these individuals more than we were able to, more than we should, and more than more than wisdom would say. Right? You have to understand that you are not God. You are not their God, and you're not their. You're not super saver, right? You are someone who have who God created to be a manifestation in the earth of his love. And you the only the only you know unwavering loyalty, love and mercy and 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 and, and just everything about you when it comes to who you are is indebted is for the Lord. You are indebted to God. That's that's the only entity that you are to be unapologetic and uncompromising about or to when it comes to doing what you believe the Spirit of God is asking you to do because the Spirit of God is freedom. The Spirit of God is pure and perfect love and he will never ask you to do anything that, again, that is going to destroy your life or is self-seeking. That tends to be 
the foundation when it comes to human beings and you know the things that they how they live what they expect from people and then again it goes back to why people can't um still love you the same way quote unquote when you decide to change when you decide to become a, a different person i don't care if you want it to be i mean whatever like it's you should have the freedom to be who you want to be in this world right and so you'll find you know what will be exposed is that people who you thought loved you people who you thought was loyal to you people who you thought you know cared about you you'll find that again when you start doing things that they don't necessarily like or it disturbs you know whatever it is that they have because also You'll find that people only want you in your life, be, want you in their life, because you, um, because you, you fit in, the, you you fit their puzzle for in whatever which way, right? Some people, you know, they really don't care about nobody. If they have friends, it's because of some, you know, manipulation or some type of something that they're getting out of the situation, so they're entertaining your friendship. But the minute you're not able to provide that, whatever it is that you're looking for, they cut you off like it's nothing. And here you are playing, you know, playing Mr. Loyalty or Mrs. Loyalty, Mrs. Love or Mr. Love. And you know what I'm saying? You're doing all these things, you know, for people who can kill, don't even love themselves, right? So ultimately, these 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 things is never about the person. Yet the enemy of your destiny is it's not about them because if they understood that if you win, they win. They would not put themselves in a situation or put themselves in predicaments where ultimately, you know, they will be handled, right? The Spirit of God who is love and, and, and protects those who, you know what I'm saying, who are in right standing with him as far as wanting to do right and live right. He takes care of us. And so what happens with, with these people, regardless of who they are, ultimately they, they, are, they, they get taken care of, right, for lack of better words. And that's just how it goes. You know, you can't just do evil and do wickedness and think that you're not going to suffer the consequences. It doesn't work like that. And I think the more people know that, the less they'll have to get, you know, belligerent, cantankerous, and just physically violent, verbally, and just be all types of way where it shows, you know, that they're not in control. When you, you know, how you show, you can say who, you can, you can say you are someone, but ultimately your actions are going to reveal who you really are. So you can say, yeah, yeah, I'm a classy person, da, 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 da. And then when, you know, something happened, you, that, that you least expect or that, you know what I'm saying? That it's just you you lose yourself. And not saying people don't things don't happen when people, you know what I'm saying, get out of character, right? I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about people again who, you know what I'm saying, who truthfully, you know, they're portraying something or portraying to be something, but it's not them simply because again, culture and society, they want to reveal themselves to be a certain way, or they want people to see them a certain way, but it's not them, right? And so those people tend to get exposed very quickly. And, you know what I'm saying, it's just a waste of time, again, dealing with people who are not honest or willing to be honest about themselves. Um, they're, they're not going to be honest with anybody. And so going back to what I was saying about these enemies of destinies, ultimately, it's, it really has nothing to do with you, right? Because if, if they really love themselves as far as wanting the best for themselves, as far as wanting the best for you, you know what I'm saying? Ultimately, it starts with yourself. If you don't, can't love yourself or respect yourself, honor yourself, give yourself the same level of integrity, love and loyalty and generosity that you would give up the people you can't do it for yourself you ain't going it's not going to work anywhere else and if you do it for anybody else best believe somewhere somehow it's for it's rooted in a selfish place so for example there's a lot of people who you know they talk about they like to give right they love being generous right but their generosity and their giving not saying this is all people but i'm saying some people their ability to be generous their ability to give is rooted in um, it's a it's a selfishness because if you're not able to um, if if you're not able to give right if you're giving because yes it makes you feel good that's one thing right that's one of the benefits of being generous it it, it gives you a good feeling it's a healing feeling right because you're able to bless that's 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 it's a godly thing right it's a godly nature it's a godly character to be able to bless people right but there are some people who are generous not because they really want to bless a person it's because they like to see or they like to feel like they are in charge or they like to feel like they have their hand over you or they like to feel that you need them, right? There are people like that. And that to me, that's perverted, that's corrupted, that's not genuine, that's not pure. And I don't want nothing and you shouldn't want anything from anybody who only want to help you because they feel like you're needy or they feel like you can't help yourself or they feel sorry for you. They have this pathetic attitude towards you, right? 
oh, you seem pathetic in their eyes. You know, you don't want help from people like that, right? And so they're being generous, they're being kind, but ultimately it's not because they think of you. You know, there's some people who feel sorry for you, not because, you know, <laughs> not because you are just this great person who, um, who have yet to discover their great potential, but simply because, you know, they just don't think that you're capable, right? They, they feel sorry for you because they don't think that you are capable. They don't think that you're capable of doing anything. They think that you're weak, right? There are some people who, that's why they feel sorry for you. And they'll come and they'll, they'll say, and they'll try to, you know, uh, talk to you and be kind to you. But the minute that you begin to rise up into your victorious identity as the love of God has always made available for you, the minute you begin walking, talking, acting according to the love for yourself, watch how their attitude changes. Watch how, they, how the way they treat you changes. Watch how the compassion and the, 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 the sadness and the pity that they have over you, watch how it turns to hate, jealousy, and envy, right? Watch how they don't even want to be around you anymore. So you don't want to play with people like that. You don't want to engage or waste time with people, again, who have revealed their character and their nature in conversations. I've seen people, how they interact with other people and how they behave, and it's just like, don't say hi to me. Don't come close to me. You know what I'm saying? Don't try to get to know me because... It's not going to work. You know what I'm saying? And again, it's about knowing who you are and knowing what works for you. Everyone is not meant to get along. Everyone is not meant to be friends. Everyone is not meant to sing kumbaya together. That's not how the world works. So the more, the quicker you can understand who you are, the quicker you can know what works for you, the quicker you can identify what crosses your spirit, as we say in the islands, the quicker you can identify the enemies of your destiny and establish standards, okay, that you become unapologetic and uncompromising about is the minute that you begin again to flourish at an accelerated rate where you're not again dealing with cultural cultural and societal and all the things that are supposed to be unspoken rules or things that you do that are you know what i'm saying um as they say that are you know culturally based or, or what's right or like who are you to determine how a person should speak how a person should walk or how a person should interact in any space like you who gave who gave you that authority who told you that your rules and the way of doing things is the right way and that's what happens that's what that's the problem with a lot of people in that's what that's the problem with a lot of cultures but most importantly that's one of the reasons why people are not able to live their free life to live liberated is because they're trying to subscribe to all these different expectations all these different rules that are not rooted in the spirit of god Ultimately, the foundational rule of the Spirit of God is that love liberates. God created us to be, even in our disloyalty, even in our, you know, our opposition towards him, he still loved us. He still allowed us to breathe his breath. He still allowed us to wake up this morning. That's why I start my video saying, you know, give God thanks. Some people didn't wake up this morning. We did. So if God has given this all freely to us, why is it that we are allowing people, mere mortals, to have us act outside of things that we don't want to do. Why are we acting mere mortals? Why, why, why are we allowing mere mortal, mortals to have us be or act outside of our freedom? Like I said in the beginning of this, of this video, if you're someone who likes to be by yourself, if you're someone who don't like to socialize, if you're someone who, you know what I'm saying, you're just, your personality is just, you're just a focused personality. Let me tell you something, there are personalities that this world, you know, I know there are psychologists and these specialists who can I try to identify and label people and have all these different characteristics to define a personality. You cannot define what God created. You cannot define the innumerable, infinite, creative abilities of God expressed in personality. So don't let anybody make you feel like just because you have commonalities, just because you have similarities, that they can ultimately define you, especially when they're subscribing to stereotypical and uh, stereotypical labels or stereotypical things that people tend to use to identify you, quote unquote. But in truth, it's not you because you're just different, right? That's again, one of the, the, the um, the, one of the tactics of the enemy is to have you out, operate outside of your God-given identity because when you act outside of your God-given identity, you have no strength. You have no power. You're disabled. You're immobile. You, you, you can't, you know, you can't, you know, you can't flourish. You can't because, again, you're, you're acting outside of your God-given identity and you'll be surprised how sneaky, how sneaky the enemy has 
uh, curated and compiled. You know what I'm saying? These ways and these mindsets and these expectations that again, if you're not able to have, you know, insight, if you don't have the insight, the wisdom, the knowledge of God, the spirit of God, Holy Spirit, who again has been the number one forerunner, you understand, in my life when it comes to discerning the nature of people, when it comes to discerning environments, when it comes to discerning the things that, again, people come and they show you this nice, beautiful package, but on the inside, it's rotten, it's garbage. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what the Holy Spirit gives you. That is a blessing to me has been, you know, one of many blessings that the Holy Spirit has given me to help me, again, just keep my confidence just to keep and stay true to who I am the best as possible you know every day we're bombarded with all these different expectations all these different things when it comes to society and you're dealing with people's their own oppression right their own bondage right a lot of times you know you're dealing with projection it's nothing it has nothing to do with you it has nothing to do with who you are it's the people the some of their experiences being expressed upon you and if you don't understand who you are and that you have the power and the authority to cut off or to not accept, not tolerate, as the word talks about, resist the enemy and he will flee, for you, flee from you. Enemies come in different forms. You understand what I'm saying? They come in different forms. It's not just a devil with horns. You understand me? It's people who, again, who are unwilling to have you operate in the full freedom. You understand what I'm saying? The full freedom that the Spirit of God gives. So I just wanted to encourage you guys on that today. Um, I pray it, this was a blessing. I know it is a blessing for those who come on here to receive it. Know that there's nothing that you can do to make anybody see you the way God sees you. When Jesus walked this earth and was doing the marvelous miracles that he was doing, nobody was able to see him the way he, that God saw him until God opened their hearts and their minds to see him the way for who he was. That is the only way. So in other words, until the Spirit of God uh, opens the hearts and the minds of those around you to see the great amazing person that you are, you know what I'm saying, and the plans that he has for your life, there's nothing that you can do. All you can do is you make that managerial decision, that leadership decision, right? That decision that you know to do, to that you know um, is making the right decision for the best interest of not only you, but the spirit of God who lives in you, right? Because at the end of the day, we are reigning in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. At the end of the day, we have, we are kings reigning under the king, capital K. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to understand that at the end of the day, yes, we have power and authority and dominion on the earth, but ultimately our life is subjected to, our dominion is connected to, our reign is sustained by the Lord. So once you understand that, there's really nothing again that can stop you. Meditate on God's word, which I'm about to do right now. Um, and, you know, as much as you can, seek God, pray God, to pray to the Lord. When things come in your way to try to throw you off, when people try to do things to set you up or, you know, hurt you or whatever, run to the Lord as David did. He ran to the Lord. The Lord was his high tower, his sacred place. That's who he ran to for his peace. That's who he ran to for protection. That's who he ran to when, you know, people was, was when he discerned, people was doing a plotting and doing all these different things. He ran to the Lord. He ran, a.k.a. the word. And so that's what I've learned is has been my strength. That's what I've learned has been my sustain. And that's what I've learned has been my reminder as to who I am is running to the, to the Lord, running to the word and not running to people, not running to, you know, not running to drugs or not running to these pleasures or food or whatever it is that we tend to run to when we're trying to find pleasure to escape whatever pain that we have gone through or alcohol or drugs, like I said, but run to the Lord, run to the word. He never fails. He never fails at delivering me from, you know, just these feelings of, of, of sadness or anger, or frustration or regret or, or just venge or being revengeful. You know, he never ceases to deliver me from these feelings. Sometimes immediately, sometimes overnight, I wake up and I feel refreshed and I feel rejuvenated, having no memory of what, what had happened. The Lord does that. And, and, and again, I just had to come on here and, and share this with you because it's real. Like you, you know, no, the world is not, you know, life is not about being perfect, right? It's not about having a perfect life or a charmed life. It's about having the tools and knowing the tools and knowing how to use the tools that the love of God has prepared for us so that we are successfully applying those tools. We're using 
using those tools. You understand what I'm saying? In the appropriate situations, in the appropriate circumstances, so that we victoriously overcome each and every single time the enemy comes at us, right? Threading, threading upon him like dust. With that being said, my beautiful people, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you have a beautiful day today and that whatever has been encroaching upon your freedom, whatever enemy of destiny that you have discerned and, and the Spirit of God is telling you to cut ties with and to be removed from, I pray that this video, again, encourages you to make that decision, to let you know that, you know what I'm saying, there's nothing that you can really do when it comes to human beings accepting you or receiving you or supporting you, but that the love of God who gave you the vision and these beautiful desires because you delight in him, that will change your life, that will take you from the pit to the palace, that will have you seat amongst kings, that will have you reigning in life, that you will begin to make those decisions as a leader, as someone who God has given you power and authority to make decisions over your life and the lives of people that he has called you to lead in jesus name amen be blessed y'all talk to you guys later